So the Twitter is Suhaib Web. It's pretty easy. Somebody asked me what's the Twitter. MashaAllah, tweets, really cool questions. Uh, one of the questions that we that I received is about homosexuality in Islam. About three or four questions about this. And is it okay to work with um, homosexual groups like you know in the in the civic uh, sphere and so on and so forth? So the first question is that in Islam. Uh, there's no disagreement amongst the scholars that homosexuality, if acted on, is something which is forbidden. It's forbidden. But there's a number of points that need to be made. Number one, when someone makes commits a major sin, that does not take them out of Islam. It does not make them a non-Muslim. We're not khawarij. The khawarij were people who believe that if someone committed a major sin, it would take them out of Islam. So we do not say that a homosexual is a non-Muslim, na'udhu billah. It's, it's a sin like any other sin that we find in Islam that people uh, fall into. Secondly, we are not allowed to make assumptions about people because of their mannerisms, how they carry themselves, for example. Because Allah says, wala tajassisu, don't spy on each other. And the Prophet said, iyaka wa dhaifa inna dhana akhlaqo al-hadith. Prophet said, don't have like bad suspicion about people. Right? Because bad suspicion is the worst uh, of, of, of conversations. Number three, that we should look at the books of Furu'a, the books of Fiqh, the old books of Fiqh. We find that there were different designations for people in society, and one of them was what was called the Khunta. The Khunta. Uh, like a eunuch, if you will. And these people were never uh, killed or beaten or uh, treated in a bad way. In fact, they coexisted in the Hanafi law books, very interesting in Hashim ibn Abidin, uh, as well as in uh, 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 the other texts, Bil al Sana'i. You'll find that the Khunta is dealt with great detail, and they're never spoken about in a, a way which debases them or, or makes them feel as though they are somehow lesser Muslims. There were certain ahkam that applied to them, there were certain ahkam that applied to them. Uh, that now will be answered by science, but in general they existed in the Muslim world, right? And definitely if we were to see one, you would assume that they were gay. Their mannerisms are that of, of what would be assumed of being a gay person. But the point that they never exhibited their homosexuality, they never uh, practiced homosexuality in the open, so the fuqaha did not assume the worst of them and actually left them alone. And they were allowed to pray and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were treated as Muslims. They had the same haqq al muslimin ala muslim in khams. And the other hadith say that the rights of the Muslim are five or six. They were afforded these rights as Muslims. The problem that we have as Muslims, for many of us, we have not learned Islam, we've learned our Islam. And this is the problem. That we bring our own constructs, our own understandings, and sometimes it's acceptable. But other times it's not. For example, the question I got now about being successful and arrogance. Someone asked, what's the difference between being successful, confident, and arrogant? In corporate America, if you cannot you know, be confident, you're going to get basically destroyed. It's a question. So the person, and this was asked to me also last week, the brother told me, we believe as Muslims in Tadmir al Nufus, which means we believe that the ego should be destroyed. I told him, we do not believe this in Islam. Who told you this? He said, wow. I said, no. Nah. <laughs> I told him, who, who said that we believe and we'll talk about this in a minute? So also the same thing here. How we deal with sinners in the community is a problem. How we deal with people who struggle. And how many of us were not sinners? We have our own issues as well. I have more skeletons than Smithsonian, man. Yeah? So how we have to be agents of transcendence. People who help others. Not people who destroy others. It's easy for me to burn down a house. It's very difficult to build one. It's easy to say a talaq. It's very hard to get married. Right, young brothers? <laughs> and sisters. So, a homosexual Muslim who struggles with homosexuality is still very much part of the Muslim community. Very much part of the Muslim community. 
they have a right to come and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the houses of Allah just as anyone else has this room. They have the right to supplicate and pray to Him and ask for His forgiveness and beseech Him for His guidance just like anyone else. We are not, this is not the same in which time. The other question is, I think, of utmost importance, and that is about is it allowed, for example, for the MSA to work with the gay organizations on campus on certain civic issues? And listen to my answer very carefully. Don't hear what you want to hear. Right? And, and, and if you think you hear something that's wrong, ask for clarification. Don't write a blog post. Because you know Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he used to say, people came to him and said, people said you said this. And people say this about you. He said, may Allah reward them for giving me their hasanat. He said, may Allah reward them for giving me their good deeds. Because they're backbiting me. And some of the salaf used to say, by Allah, if someone backbites me, they would say, I will take their hasanat and I will not give them back. And someone said, oh, this is a harsh answer. He said, the day of judgment is harsher. You know, I'll take all the hasanat I can get, though. But listen to my answer very carefully. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was related by Imam al-Bukhari when he was on his trip for a, what happened, of course, his first Umrah. He wanted to make with his companions and he was stopped by the polytheists of Mecca from entering in the city. And actually he stopped at a place called Saraf. And there he married Maymuna radiallahu anha, the aunt of Ibn Abbas. And on the way there, his camel Aswa, as related by Bukhari, stopped and froze at this area and wouldn't go forward and the companions of the Prophet began to tease him وسلم, because this is the relationship he had with them, brothers and sisters. They were homeboys. It wasn't a robotic relationship. And the translation is totally bogus. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying this to undermine the English language. I'm saying this to inspire you to learn more. It gives you the general meaning, but again, it's like biryani without the achar. It tastes good, but it's not as good as it could be. You understand? It's like microwave haleen. Right? It's not the same as the one that mama spent four days making. It's good. It'll fill you up, but it lacks a little something. You know what I mean? We can continue. Someone's hungry.